It's your boy Maestro on the block at the Black Effect Podcast Festival, man. I'm just talking to some of the guests out here, see what everybody got going on. Met this dude right here, man. What's your name? Where you from? Uh, my name is Montan from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Are, are you a podcaster? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what's the name of your podcast? It's called the True Tone Podcast. Okay. Nice. Nice. How long you been doing it? I started in January. <laughs> okay. How's it going? What's the experience like? Um, it's good. I, I'm learning a lot. You know, you got to be diligent. You got to... Uh, you gotta make a decision to get guests. It's hard. You gotta you gotta build actual relationship. It takes time to do that. You can't do it, you know, off the rip and you gotta be patient with yourself and you gotta make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Nice, nice. So um with the Black Effects Podcast Festival, uh what's your favorite podcast from the uh, Black Effect uh network? Oh, that's a hard one. I would probably uh I, I was checking out the trap nerd, so I'd probably say that. I, I like Dream Champs, uh, Million Dollars Worth of Game, and uh, We Talk Back. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, yeah, they got some good ones. I really enjoyed their interview with uh, uh, Big Sean. Um, it's funny how they be getting people drunk, though. <laughs> they be tricking people. Hey, yeah, I be worried about them dudes' liver, though. You feel me? After all these interviews. They about to have some of that black, like, black uh, licorice in their stomach. You know what I'm saying? I be like, that. they need to calm down. And I'm not talking about being associated with the university right, right. or anything, but you know, you should always be growing spiritually, mentally, and physically. So that's why you should listen to podcasts is because it's great conversation and too and, and, it, and it's a good distraction if you're not having a good day. It's, it's good education if you want to learn. Facts, something. facts, facts. So th there's a lot of goodies in podcasts and there's a lot of goodies online too. Nice, nice. So there you have it. Shout out your podcast one more time. It's called the True Tone Podcast. My name is Monte Hall. Thank you. What up here with my name is Nyla Simone, DJ Nyla Simone. How you doing? What's your name and where you from, bro? Uh, Phil, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, I see you got the camera out. Like, what you out here, just uh, networking, taking pictures? Yeah, yeah, just uh, just getting a little BTS, trying to get the feel of the uh, Black Effect weekend and just, you know, because I got my own production company, Unlaced Productions. Just okay, <clears throat> nice. So are you a podcaster yourself? Yes, I own three podcasts. Okay, name them for them. Then let them know where they at. Where uh, the first one is our Journey of Love podcast. You know, on all platforms. The second one is the Just Listen podcast with two ends. Okay. And then we have the Never Play Yourself podcast. Okay. So, um, how long you been listening to podcasts, and why do you choose to listen to podcasts? Um, I've been doing it about five years now, maybe five or six years now, when it kind of just kind of kicked off, really. 
And then I like listening to podcasts because, you know, it just gives you something different besides if you just can't sit there and watch it on TV or yeah, exactly. all the information you can. So, yeah, just podcasts. And it just gives you a different perspective on maybe different topics that you just really want to listen to. Okay. Okay. So, we're at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. What's your favorite um, podcast that they got in their network? Uh, I would say probably the 85 South. 85 South Show? That's a big one. They probably one of the most popular. I also like uh, Drink Champs. I like We Talk Back. Uh, I even listen to Cezanne Figaro, No Shot, No Chaser, or whatever. I listen to all of that. You feel me? But you said um, 85 South Show is the main one you rock with? Now, Drink Champs is on there too now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you just got to make through the whole, you know, the episode. <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of long. <laughs> so, yeah, Drink Champs is one, but definitely just behind them. Right. That sort. So, yeah, just, you know, it's really for the, you know, the little guy. Yeah, you got to pound, pound your feet. You know what I'm saying? You got to hit the, hit the pavement, put in that work, get your face out there and be seen. So that's what you're doing right now, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just kind of here networking, got my little popple band and hey, hit that wrist and then all the information going to come up. Tell them one more time before we get out of here, uh, your podcast and where they can check them out at. Okay, you can check all the podcasts on all the platforms, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, uh, iHeartRadio, Amazon Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Uh, the first one is the Never Play Yourself Podcast. You got the Just Listen Podcast with two N's and Our Journey of Love Podcast. I appreciate you, man. Check him out. I'm pretty sure he got some heat. Check out my guy for sure. Good luck, bro. Appreciate it. I There's no regular people, right? And Angela Yee's demographic was, in my opinion, my direct audience. Black, women, men, 30s, late 20s. So I wanted to speak to the opposite side of that. And we started our show being corporate girls, you know, having fun, swiping on Tinder just like the rest of us. And so to me, the audience were people just like me. And I think that I would talk to them when I was initially, you know, doing my podcast directly to women, making comments about my pH or my period and feeling like I could connect with that person. And I think that when making content, we have to know exactly who we want to talk to. Because if you at least talk to that specific audience, the rest will follow. There's men that listen to my show, but it's just because maybe by chance or they want to hear a sex story. But my core audience, if you use that word, is black women. What? When you first started, did you, was that your goal setting up? I don't think that I knew that when I first started, and maybe a lot of y'all are first starting, right? I just thought, I want to be rich, I want everybody to listen to it, but that's not really a good idea, because everybody isn't going to get me paid. I mean, look at all of us in here, we look the same. And so I had to realize who's really going to feed me, who is going to be excited about what I'm talking about. And it was black men, and I realized when I would talk about my wig falling off during sex, white girls were kind of like, I don't really get it. So, you know. I know where we I mean, I have Hey fans, but I do. <laughs> that was the thing. It's like you gotta know who you're talking to, and once you have that, it follows itself. I think I don't know if Charlemagne said it or someone said it once about the read, which is the god of all podcasts to me. Yeah. Basically saying that like I'm like you know, but they be cussing out white people and saying all this stuff, and he was like, yeah, and the white people that listen like being told about themselves, and that's what I realized. Like I'm just gonna talk to who I want to, and the rest will follow because I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. So what advice would you give to people to Sorry, grow which, by the way, I really believe that is why 85 South is so amazing, because I'm really watching three friends entertain each other. And I think that is why it's so great, because they don't, they need each other. That building, that bond, it's like, you get to watch people really talking to their audience and that, and they figure that's awesome. I agree. What advice would you give to grow your audience, or grow your listenership? So the biggest advice I would give anybody is to cross promote. Find the shows that are shows that you feel like are in line with your content. Uh, for myself, it's meeting with other sex experts. It's meeting with other sex podcasters or someone adjacent like black podcasters. Um, I, feel, I feel like when I have other podcasters come on my show, they need to speak to my audience. You know what I'm saying? And when they do, like if you're not coming on horrible to talk about sex, my audience is gonna hate you. I don't know if anyone heard the City Girls interview we did, but Carisha was not Carisha in that day. And it was really difficult because people didn't enjoy that. And I realized I have to only interview people that are going to blend with my demographic because then I could take theirs. So when you interview someone that's like your listeners, you grow your audience like that. 
doesn't like that. Alex, other than making investments, how do you think companies or brands should communicate specifically with black consumers and creators? And why? <laughs> First thing, I think, there should be more of us in the rooms. Like, they have to hire more black people. Because, like, we've all seen Juneteenth or uh, Black History Month. It's pandering, it's kind of, it, it's, they're just not speaking to us because they're culturally cool. And I think if they have more of us in the room, they can honestly speak to more people, uh, more people of color in our community. To add to that, it's just all in representation, like you said. And it's basically speaking to us like you speak to anyone else. We're all the same. Chad, how do you know if you have a successful podcast? Uh, I think you got to define success for yourself. I mean, no, nah, I guess I can have one. Um, some people define it, some people looking for a lot of views. You know, for us, I just want to make sure we're covering our payroll, you know. It just depends. So, like, when I'm saying define success, if you just getting started, you might want to crack 50,000 views so you can get, you know, your first advertisement. Or maybe you want to make just enough money off YouTube so you can invest in cameras. But uh, your success parameters are going to change every couple of months anyway. So I think you need to... I meet a lot of people that get into podcasts and they really don't know what they, why they're doing what they're doing. So if you create the why to what you're doing, you can put success right behind it. Is this something, is, the, is success somewhat correlated to determined by monthly downloads, you think? Yeah, I mean, so from a business standard, yes. Because the amount of downloads you have is what you leverage to advertise them and why they should spend X amount of dollars with you over a time period. So yes, downloads are successful, but as you grow your show, there's going to be more uh, checkpoints that you want to hit that can create more success for you. Okay. And then, if, if would you consider if, if a podcast has celebrities or special hosts come in, would that be a milestone for success or no? Again, it just... Back. There's so many audiences and podcasts. There's some people that don't want to hear nothing from a celebrity. They want to hear from uh, there's a there's like horror podcasts and docu style podcasts. There's a sports talk podcast. You know, it doesn't need to be celebrity based. I think a lot of people lean too heavy on celebrity because they're looking for a viral moment. But podcasts are no different than television, no different than a book. If the content is good. It's going to be sustainable, more sustainable long term. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy Maestro. We're at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. I got the homies right here. I'm going to let them tell y'all who they are, what they got, got, got going on. Uh, you first. Who are you and what you got going on? I'm Tony from Raw Table Talk. We got a number one hottest podcast coming out of Tallahassee, Florida. Nice, nice. And your name? Yeah, I'm Dirt. Raw Table Talk, Tallahassee, Florida, you know. Also, oh, y'all from y'all from Florida. Like, How long y'all been here in A? No, we, we living. We drove from Florida up here just for the Black Effect podcast. Nice. So um, tell me a little bit about your podcast. Who want to really break it down, what y'all got going on? Oh, uh, man, our podcast is just like all out raw content. You know what I'm saying? We, okay. We give the people something, you know, they can view. We talk about all type of topics. There's no limits to it. And, you know, and then one of the main goals we want to do is to reach one, teach one. Okay. Do you got like a certain demographic y'all really trying to reach? Like men, women, teenagers, or? We want to touch a good balance of everybody. Okay, what is, so going forward, like, what was like one of the conversations y'all had that really got some good engagement on it that y'all really feel like people was paying attention? Ooh. Yeah, we got into the... The mental health aspect of it, we got into that, and that, that, that touched a, a broad demographic of people that, you know, don't, uh, mental health don't know no age, you know? Yeah, real talk. And also, we got into um, gun violence and, like, street politics, like how street rules on the... Right, right. Yeah. Now that's an important conversation, especially for dudes that look like us. You feel me? More of us need to be talking about that. So I salute y'all for even touching on both of those, both of those subjects. That's important. So what's one of y'all favorite podcasts that they got on their network that y'all really check out? Big Facts for sure. Big Facts. Yeah, Big. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Big Facts, man. Yeah. That's and, the main one and I like, I like, I like, I like, I like brilliant idiots. Yeah, brilliant idiots. That's been on a. But big facts, it, it, it's what, what's the what's the big dude on big facts? That's uh, banks, banks. Yeah. banks. I just love the knowledge banks drop, man. He he always he gonna take it there in mind right then. But then they got interesting, so you wanted to get more content and more content, which birth raw table talk, you know. Raw table talk, okay. And you um, 
How long you been listening to podcasts, and why do you listen to podcasts? I give it about since 2019, so that's about three, four years. I've been on. Um, at first, it was like to just watch people, you know, engage the conversations back. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Just to see how people really think, and you know, I'm like, shit, I want to try this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I listen to podcasts. I started listening to probably like probably like six seven years ago and i just like the, the extra knowledge you get from listening to people doing other stuff you feel me like especially if you're a person that likes to learn and grow you know what i'm saying i love the real conversations i'll be telling my people like check out some podcasts so i ask y'all this what, how, what would y'all tell people that look like us that don't listen to podcasts they don't give it a chance like what would y'all tell them take a little bit of time out today and just give it a try just give it a try i be telling you to broaden your horizon you keep doing what you always did you'll get what you always got why do you think some of us think podcasting is, because like most of the people, this podcast is white people. Why do you think a lot of us don't jump out there and really, you know what I'm saying, take in that knowledge? Honestly, I feel like some people need to see somebody else do it before they try it. Yeah, that's probably it. They'll get that motivation from somewhere else and then be like, okay, what's the bro doing it? Let me see if I can do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's up. Tell them one more time before we get out of here where they can check out uh, Raw Table Talk. I see y'all got the custom hoodies on. Raw Table Talk on all platforms everywhere. All, all platforms, Raw Table Talk everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Ditto. <laughs> ditto, ditto. That's it, you feel me? So good luck. Appreciate y'all. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Maestro. We back at the Black Effect Podcast Festival, and I'm here with somebody going to tell you who she is and what she got going on. So let me ask you this. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Toya, a.k.a. Mrs. Wilson, and I am from Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay, we got Arkansas in the house. That is what it is. You feel me? And I heard you say you're a podcaster. I am. I am a podcaster. I've been doing it for about 18 months, about a year and a half. Okay, and that's the name of it, The Spill. The Spill Podcast, baby, where we keep it real. Okay, okay. You said you've been doing it 18 months? Yeah. What's been some of the challenges since you started, like uh, hurdles that you had to overcome? I think the main hurdles that I've had to overcome are um, the technical difficulties with, right. the, with the recording part and making sure that I have the correct URL, right. and the links and all of that stuff. But that's it. That's it. That's the technical part. But I'm, I think I'm pretty good now. Nice, nice, nice. So when did you, uh, when you started it? Um, who, did somebody else inspire you to start your podcast? Like, did you see like somebody from the Black Effect doing theirs and kind of inspired you? Or? Listen, it's crazy because I just became a Black Effect follower about five or six months ago. Okay. But in 2021, one of my best friends, who is the city director in my city, shout out to Antoine Phillips, um, him and his close friend, who was also a state representative for Arkansas, mm. they had a podcast. And it was a podcast almost like Politics for Dummies, Black Folk, um, but it was real. They talked about real stuff. They broke it down. And I just feel like black women, we really didn't have that platform. And I really right. wanted to do something like it. So I I called him in like 2001. I was like, yo, do you think I'll be good at this? What do you think? I right, right. Do it. And he was like, absolutely. Like, nobody doing it in the city. You need to do it. And I just went from there. Wrote the vision in 2021. Made it plain in 2020. 22. <laughs> nice, nice. So, um, I'm a YouTuber, so I don't know too much about the podcast game. Are you hosted by Anchor? Like, what's the thing? That's the, the main one that people um, use to host their podcasts? The main one is Anchor, um, but I'm also on Apple Podcasts, and then, you know, Anchor is Spotify. Um, I'm on iHeartRadio. But I go through Spreaker and Spreaker. Spreaker, I heard of that. Once you go through Spreaker, it's a monthly fee, which is still dope. It's not much, but they'll kind of put your podcast on any podcast platform ever for you. Pay attention, that's game right there. If you're trying to get into it, just pay the little monthly monthly fee, fifty dollars. You can probably make more than that doing it, but just pay your monthly fee, and they'll put you out there on every podcast airway. Okay, so we here at the Black Effect Festival. Um, what's your favorite podcast that they got on their network? Uh, my favorite would probably be Horrible Decisions. Don't tell nobody, <laughs> but I love it's, it's entertaining. It's it big. <laughs> um, of course, I love um, The Breakfast Club. We don't have that station where I'm from. Oh, okay. I listen to the podcast part every single day. On oh, no, iHeartRadio? Radio? Yeah. yeah, me too. I'm the same way. Yo. So, I, uh, I love The um, Black Effect. Um, I mean, The Breakfast Club. And then right. Horrible Decisions. Um, I think those are my two favorites. Two favorites? Yes. Um, I, I love this. Hilarious. You know, Reckless is, is super funny. Oh, yeah, Carefully Reckless, yeah. I, I got to catch her when I'm, like, sober and stuff, because if I'm lit, she'll have me going acting a fool. But, yeah, I love her, too. Okay, I want to ask you this real quick. What can listeners expect when they go to check out the spiel? Like, when they, they don't know what's going on, they never heard of it, what can they expect? One real conversation 
by one bold person at a time. Just real spill. We talk about everything culture. We talk about everything black, everything relationship, everything love, everything real, everything financial, everything young adult, everything mid young adult, almost old adult. We just talk about everything real, relationships, careers, um, just great dialogue to bring the people together, to let the people know, you know, you can start from the bottom and still get here at the end of the day. So. Nice. And the last question, like, what's your favorite thing about the podcast medium? It wasn't really existing, popping like this five, ten years ago, but now it's blue. What's your favorite thing about this medium as you do yours and listen to other people? Your favorite thing about it? Right. Really, the podcast medium is really has been big if you listen to radio. So I grew up listening to radio. I'm, I'm a neighborhood girl, ran away girl. So I grew up listening to 92.3 where I'm from, and that was literally podcast yeah. for me. So they gave real information. They had conversations that people wasn't having. But right now, I love the autonomy that you're able to really say what the f*** you want. Yeah, that's what I like about it. That's why I listen. When you want to say it. And people can either listen or they can't. Or they won't. Or they nice. so, Okay, yeah. okay. That'll work. And before we get out of here one more time, look at the camera and tell them exactly where to get and listen to your podcast. The Spill Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram, The Spill Podcast 21. You can follow me on um YouTube, The Spill Podcast, TikTok, The Spill Podcast, and um, if you want to know me personally, my page is open on Facebook. It's T'Challa, like Black Panther, T-C-H-A-L-L-A, Wilson. Nice to meet you, y'all. All Apple, iHeart, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, Buzzsprout, wherever you listen to your podcast, just type in The Spill Podcast. Look for the black girl, though, because it's a few people trying to take my, you know, but look for me, and I'm there. <laughs> You can tell she's entertaining. She got the juice, so go check her out. Appreciate it. I also think people put too much emphasis on downloads and the money you're making in podcasting. Because, like, we see the big numbers, like, we see the Joe Rogans and bar stores, and you see, like, giant numbers. And people think that everyone's making this type of money in podcasting. I think it's more important if you impact the community. Like, you would have a smaller show, but if your show, everyone's talking about it, it's a clip that goes viral, some people might consider that more successful than a show that's just making money. I'll say personally, as a new podcast joining in the podcasting arena, I definitely think the first milestone should just be kind of going back to what Weezy was saying, just being passionate about it in general. Because if I were to like look at 85 South, Weezy, and everybody that's doing it big, I mean, thank God for the Black Effect constantly reminding me like, girl, it's gonna take some time. So I just get to enjoy the creative process and not burning through the entire production budget. That's 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 the goal, but mainly just to enjoy what I do. So Shout I definitely think it's important. I mean, right, the nail on the head because I did think success was like me being Joe Rogan. You know what I'm saying? But it's not beyond me that like, I could maybe go through an airport and nobody knows me and I go to a black women's event and everyone knows me. So like, it really depends on what you're looking for. I think some people think hitting a million downloads is a thing, but that million download person may not be making as much money who's doing less. And what he said about niche podcasts, you know, listen, just say you have a travel podcast that not a lot of people listen to. You can hit a lick with the travel network and get paid to travel the world and be making mad bread. Or like Video Nerd, Trap Nerds podcast. A video game can pay them out for a year and make way more money than mine, even though I may be coming on at a later set time than them. People make so much money from podcasting in different ways that has nothing to do with that big number of views. And I think when people learn how to do that, whether it be merch, panels, Patreon, bonus content, partnerships, then you're really getting out of that box of the big numbers. I like that. I'll say this. I think if y'all can, if you can figure out how to replace your job via podcast, you already know. That's why, 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 why so? Let's say you make X amount of dollars a month via whatever job you have. If you can make that money working for yourself and the freedom that comes with that, you already know. So everything else is really extra. And podcast absolutely affords that opportunity. I think speaking to the panel here, everyone is entrepreneurs. Everyone has come from a space of working for themselves and turned podcasts into a stream of revenue and are doing well. What up, world? It's your boy Maestro. I'm back at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. We got some podcasters here. I'm going to let them give their name and tell them what they got going on real quick. First of all, I'll start with you. What's your name? My name is Shagun. Shagun Jagada. Uh, Goon Got Jokes. You know, I'm a comedian. Um, 
It's your boy TB, man. What's going on, man? We happy to be here. Black Effect, shout out. We here. This is the first year. We're going to keep going, baby. Hi, my name is Mariah. Okay, and where y'all from? We're from Atlanta. Atl. Hey, what's the name of y'all podcast? And kind of give some one of y'all give us like a, a breakdown of what's it about? Yeah. You, you want to take it? All, All right, right. So look, it's the Open Book Podcast, man. We open and honest. We talk about the current events, what's going on. We want to stay popular. We want to stay current. We want to know what the people feel. So I want y'all to tap in with us as soon as you can. The Open Book Podcast. We on Instagram. We on TikTok. We on YouTube. We on anywhere you can find a podcast. Come see us. Make sure you type it exactly like that. The Open book podcast we don't don't working on our name guys so it's a little shorter for everybody to type in but you know that's it right we'll now get it yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> but at the end of the day you know really it's all about being you know vulnerable within the situation as well because you know we not we got jokes but you know we cry too but yeah, yeah, yeah you know, you know <laughs> real yeah, talk yeah. but how did y'all come together like to be this trio because i think it's more successful when you got more people that can promote it more people can talk you know what i'm saying like how did y'all come together yeah, we've known each other for quite a while. She's my wife. Yeah, yeah. She's we don't have to talk my, about that. He's my best friend since like middle school, high high school. We've known each other since we was kids. Yeah, come on. You know, basically, you know. So we that's had just and exactly like that exactly. because of our relationship. So then we got together. So y'all wasn't nervous. Y'all wasn't scared. Like I don't know. Like y'all already had no doubts. Like y'all just jumped in. Like fuck it. When you see, when you have a dream, you follow it through. When you know who you are. That's what I'm saying. Is this? No, 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 yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. But the, Obviously, you're going to be scared, but that's good, though. But confidence comes from knowing. Confidence comes from, from doing and, and practice and repetition. So we just, we do what we can do because we, that's all we can do. Yeah. Katie, yeah. Katie made it, Katie said it. Pra uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, I know who I am. I don't care what he said. He said practice, I know who I am. practice, practice. Um, no He's talent. Very bad with talent like slogans. Just take the mic from him. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 do talent, talent with, with talent without hard, uh, hard work. No talent. Hard work works when talent doesn't. No, nah, nah. <laughs> Hey. No, but Bad, time be hard, hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Try to be consistent. That's hey, look, that's I know what he's saying. I know I heard it, but I can't get it together in my head. But I, I heard it before. You feel? You know. <laughs> but so I'm gonna ask you this: like, since we here at the Black Effect Podcast, um, I'm gonna ask each of y'all your favorite uh, podcast is on the Black Effect Network, starting with you. I'm gonna have to go reasonably shady, just because I'm also like, nice housewives. But yeah, that's my favorite. I love y'all. Uh, 85 South, man. I'm a big fan. Shout out to the city. Shout out to the boys. Always laughing, man. I love it. Man, I'm proud of them. Everybody seems so proud of them. It's just some something, something just different about them. Everybody's just so hyped for them. Like, and they, they they do it for the community. Exactly. It feel, it feel real. It feel real. That's what it is. That's what it is. Any anything, Charlemagne on. Not not gonna lie. Oh, yeah. Anything. Anything. You know. Let's <laughs> say. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he hosting in there and everything, but you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's hosting, so he comes out in the middle, but we love you. This is so great that you put this on. It really helps people like us and other podcasts. Yeah. So we really appreciate it. Okay, I got another question for y'all. Like, how long y'all been listening to podcasts, and why do y'all choose to listen to podcasts? Y'all could be listening to music or uh, something else. Like, a lot of us black people don't choose to listen to podcasts. First, with you, why did you start listening to podcasts, and how long ago? You know, I'm on a podcast called The Open Book, so I'm going to be honest. I do not listen to podcasts that much. Okay. But it is something that I do want to get into because I'm on a podcast and I know the importance okay. of it. But it is not my first listen. But I have heard glimpses of certain podcasts and I do enjoy them. And I do appreciate, you know, the fact that you could just be driving and listening to it and get a lot of information. Right, right. Yeah, that's how I feel about podcasts. What about you? How long you been listening and why do you listen? Uh, so the first podcast I really jumped into was Joe Button. Come on uh, the Joe Button podcast. They cook, man. Them boys got on there. They talked about music. Well, they well, talked well, about well, sports. Well, well, the well. niggas is crazy, man. They made us laugh. So it was like I was tuned in. But comedy podcasts, different things like that. I'm 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 all over the spectrum, man. I love a good podcast. A good podcast. Start started started uh, pandemic. Not gonna lie to you. Ain't had nothing to do, you know. So you know what I'm saying. So I'm saying, you know, literally. Brilliant idiots. They the clips. That's when the clips was coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just start. I was like, oh snap! This is this is funny. All of a sudden, you just start finding different ways, different people. You know, you just start listening to more, and it's like this kind of became a. I was in the podcast now all the time. From you know, even like especially YouTube is just such a great lane because it's like obviously it's visual, but it's like you know you never knew that those were podcasts until you start watching. You're like, oh, right, right. Yeah. So it's things like that that I, you know I've always been a big YouTube person. So. 
just kind of switching to, you know, realizing, like, oh, this, these are podcasts as well. Right. Shout out before I get out here. Before we get out here, I want you to look at this camera and tell them one more time where they can find your podcast. What's the name, the spelling, everything. Which one do y'all want to give it to them? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. We are the Open Book Podcast. The Open Book Podcast. I know y'all know how to spell all those words. So I'm not going to spell them all out. But, yes, yeah, so we're all... <laughs> So we'll give it to him. T H E O P E N B O O K. Don't mess up. P O D C A S T. The Open Book Podcast. Come find us. You know where we at Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we'll find you on Snapchat if you want us to. But tap in. Tap in. Tap in, y'all. Tap in. That's what it is. Black Effect Podcast Festival. We out. <laughs> Yes. Hey, what up, world? This is Maestro. We're back at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. I'm here with some people. How y'all feeling today? Better than most. Right. Better than most. Okay, give me your name and where y'all from one at a time. We're starting with you. Lola, I'm from Florida. Okay, Lola. Barbara Curry from Connecticut. Barbara. Michael, that's my mama. I'm from Connecticut, but I live in GA. Okay, okay, nice, nice. What brings y'all to the Black Effect Podcast Festival? I love Charlemagne. Okay. I love the Black Effect, and it's about podcasting, which I say I want to start. You need to go ahead. Get on it. I'm here because my mama bought the ticket, and she said we going. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, with the Black Effect Podcast Festival, um, what's your favorite podcast that's on their network, starting with you? On the Black Effect Podcast? Yeah, you know they got Drink Chance. They got Million Dollars Worth of Game, um, Horrible Decisions. Game. You can say Breakfast Club. I love um, I like Breakfast Champs. Club. You know, I like Drug Champs. Yeah, man, they be going in. What's your favorite? You like the guests or the fact that they be drunk? I just like Nori. I feel like he keep it so real and he yeah. like he real. Even when um yeah, when, even when uh, what was it marriage? Uh, what was it marriage? What was that marriage boot camp? He be over talking to guests sometimes. Yeah. He real though. <laughs> That's cause he saw Oh, he right. He'll ask him a question, and before they can answer, he he come up with a story. You know what I did last yeah. night? I'll be like, bro. I like the fact that they're, I like the fact that they're uh, doing it from the crib. Oh yeah. Right. The crib, right. Yeah. Miami. I like Michelle Williams. I like Kirk Franklin. I like I like them all. You okay, know? yeah. Michelle Williams got that podcast called uh, Checking In. Check That's it. hers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I think she's supposed to be here today. Jill Scott. I mean, the list goes on. They got a lot. They got a lot. Yeah, she's a so, how long you been listening to podcasts? Like, when did you start listening to podcasts and why? I want to ask all of y'all, starting with you. Um, I'm going to say about two years ago, during the pandemic. Okay, and why, what made you do that? Why would you start listening to podcasts? Ooh, I mean, you didn't have much to do but to either learn or just explore different sides of yourself. You know what I mean? Okay, and for you, when did you start listening and why? I don't know, because the app was on my phone or whatever, but I'm thinking more because of COVID, but now, and I can listen to it at work, yeah. <laughs> And you, why did you start listening and when? Um, honestly, it's only been a few months. I'm not even going to lie to you. Okay, that's cool. Because every time I turn around, my mom is like, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. You got to listen to this. <laughs> um, but I do love it for, like, the self-help and the motivation. Like, sometimes I'm yeah. by myself. I have a four-year-old, but when I'm in the car by myself, yeah. it's definitely motivational. Like, all right, we about to get this day together. We about to get yeah, this day I'm the same way. I think it's motivational. It teaches me stuff I didn't even know about. You know what I'm saying? If you're a constant student, you want to learn something new, you can listen right. to conversation of people doing creative stuff, and you just get a lot. So what would you tell people that be like, I don't listen to podcasts. I just listen to music. I don't know nothing about that. What would y'all tell those people that don't even give it a chance? Pull up the app. Let me show you. I know that's right. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, honestly, music kind of, ha I feel like, has one path. It's yeah. just to entertain. You know what I'm saying? So if you're trying to sit here and broaden your mind, yeah. that's what podcasts are for. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Music can be somewhat like a, a distraction yeah. to take right. you somewhere else, but podcasts make you more attentive and brings you back mm -hmm. to the real world. And I see it as kind of like a tool because they be giving out game and telling you like, you know what I'm saying, like how to get loans and it's just so much different stuff on all these podcasts that I would have never known right. if I ain't start checking them out. And be believe it or not, I've listened to podcasts that I didn't even like, but after a while they grow on you. Yeah. You know, you're like, okay, I could I could see this perspective right. and whatnot. And it also makes you broaden your horizon as far as like, okay, some people do think like this. Hey, right. why do I think like that? Okay. So you challenge yourself too, though. So. Yeah, definitely challenge yourself and I think that's a problem a lot of people don't want to challenge yourself like they, they get to a point they stop learning and stop growing you know what I'm saying but that's what it is so before we get out there y'all want to give a shout out y'all Instagram or anything where people can check y'all out and any last words starting with you 
Uh, my Instagram is at Ulola, that's O-O-H-H dot L-O-L-A. Nice, nice. And you? I don't know what any of my names are, Twitter, Instagram, or Yahoo, or then what I want to say. <laughs> Just Barbaralicious if you're nasty. Mm. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. Uh, my Instagram is uniquely sexy is me, but the I S is really I Z. So uniquely sexy I Z me. Yes. Nice, nice. How long y'all gonna stay out here? Y'all gonna be out here for a little while, or y'all about to? Depends. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, that's it. Black Effect Podcast Festival. We out. We out. Thank you. I had to clock in and do horrible. Do y'all know how crazy that was? I'll never forget the day I did Brilliant Idiots. They only tape in the daytime. And I was like, damn, I had to fake sick. <laughs> Sorry. And I was so excited getting on that subway to be able to meet Charlamagne and Andrew. And like, at the end of the day, sometimes our nine to fives, like, you really got to keep it until you know you can at least have a roof over your head with podcasting. The day that I quit my job, I wasn't making as much money, but I knew, hey, now I've got a little more time to pour into it. My marker was, can I pay my rent from the podcast? And it was I remember I used to run from my lunch break over to Brilliant Idiots to go film. And every time they would run along and I would have to come back with an excuse like, oh, I got hurt or food sickness or some shit like that. And the moment I was able to quit my job and not have to have that stress, it was oh, such a blessing. Amen. Thanks for podcast. Hey, Amen to that. So, Alex and Chad, how do you make money in podcasting? So there's the, you know, there's a tradition, there's like the, I mean, we still kind of defining the rules of podcasting, but the traditional way, I guess you would say, is through uh, advertising reads. That's your pure audio podcasting. But I feel like I should be a little more specific for us, because we turn the audio into um, video that we make on YouTube. We have a streaming service that's subscription-based. We take that and now it goes on the road and the tours. And then we have a merchandise company and apparel company as well. And then we have a couple of brand partnerships. And we have a studio as well that we rent out. So, but all that came just from podcasting, just from the audio. So, I think I answered that. You did. You did. You did. The opportunities that can come from. Saying that there's so many different streams that it can divide into to get the revenue. I was saying, how do you make money? It's primarily just in podcasting. Yeah, so that's probably going to be just you know ad reads, and maybe you got some ad partnerships. Well, everyone thinks the money is yeah, only with the talent, and me, I've always been in production, behind the scenes, and most of my money has come from production. And yeah, I turn being a videographer into editing into opening a studio and a lot of my money comes from the production side of podcast. I want to tell y'all something about Alex too. Today, Alex and I are in a studio. We have 11 employees, all black, and we got Puerto Rican. But, you know, Alex offered to do video for Horrible Decisions for free years ago. And today, he's one of the highest paid podcast producers because he was really putting in that work and I think that collaborating with us, collaborating with Brilliant, and being able to even offer a service for free when you know you're good, that just kind of gets you in the door. So I would recommend to anybody that makes content or produces or any BTS video people, hit somebody up that you're a fan of and be like, yo, let me follow you for the day or let me make you a clip because nine times out of 10, if you're lit, they gonna hire you again. And I really believe that collaborating in that way helps. Weezy. Like radio, podcast lives within the entertainment audio medium. How important is it or not to have a visual, visual audio component to your podcast and why? I mean, I don't really make money on the visual like that, but I think that the clips help. Um, you know, Horrible Decisions is an X-rated show, so YouTube doesn't pay me the same as a lot of other advertisers would. So that's a very difficult part of it. Um, however, at the level that Horrible Decisions is, we do need video. I do believe that having video makes it easier for people to watch, to enjoy. But I'm gonna say this. I used Patreon as a way to pay for my video. I could not afford to do video back in the day. 
So it was like, hey, if you want to watch us on video, pay 20 extra bucks a month, and you got every episode like that. And that was able to, you know, help us pay people out, pay the producers, things like that. But for the most part, audio was well, is where my bread comes from. What the first boy, Maestro, I'm here at the Michael Beck Podcast Festival, and I got a popular filmmaker here with me today. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hamilton from North Carolina. I'm a full-time filmmaker and I write, produce, and direct films and we do them every day. So how long you been doing this? How long you been putting out films? Well, as far as feature films and like being full-time, it's been since 2017. Okay. But prior to that, I was just playing around doing documentaries but not really thinking of being a feature film filmmaker. Okay, so what made you to do this out of all the stuff you could do with your creativity? What made you go into this lane? Honestly, I was producing music and it got kind of crazy, you know, and during that process I got married and we had kids and I felt like that lifestyle, it just didn't add up. Yeah. And, um, and honestly, I was at work one day and I prayed to God what to do and a few things happened and I ended up uh, bumping into Time on the Cable and at the time they had a public access. And it took me nine months, but I made a 30 minute show for them. Okay. And they put it on, bro, the worst looking show on the planet, but they took it. And from then on, it just kind of evolved. For two years, I worked for them. I got fired because I kept showing reruns. You know what I mean? They were like, no, you got to make new content. You can't sh they wanted a show every week. And I didn't know what, I, this is my first time. You know, I didn't know what right, right. on. So about a year and a half, two years, they was like, man, you, you, I tried to slip one more in because just to breathe, and they let me go. And I just felt led to make feature films, and boom, I'm like 18 feature films in. Y'all hear that 18 feature films? Like, he's going, like, that's hard. It just sound like words, but I made a film before. One is hard. He done 18, you feel me? It's real out here. So what would you say was, like, uh, the biggest thing to help you get to a level where people can actually see you the biggest hurdle you had to get over you feel me was it the that it, the competition was it getting the right team like what was the biggest thing that you had to accomplish to get in the lane where you could just coast really getting out of my own way no. That's what it was? Yeah, it's like, because there's so many things with fear, and if we're not trembling, we don't recognize it as fear. But right. It's simple. It's just not walking over to that person. You know what I mean? Sometimes you never, those moments chain reaction. This moment right here, we, we don't know what this could turn to. You, yeah, you're right. You never know. So it's just really getting, moving that fear out of the way. And like, and once I was able to do that, I was able to walk into a job that took care of my family and just quit. And That's hard. That's hard. And so when once I did that and started moving on, it just it starts to become a habit once you get that fear out of the way. So that was my biggest thing, getting out of my own way. Okay, so it wasn't that hard for you to find like your production team and casting team, and because I feel like in Atlanta it's about finding the right people to work with, and I feel like for me that's been a challenge. Like, man, that, 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 that's a whole sermon. But if you can find the right people, then. Like, it, it will take place on its own because they're trying to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I was in a place where film wasn't booming at the time, so I couldn't find anybody. That's right. how I end up writing, directing, and producing because I just had to get it done. But by the grace of God, it created a system where I, we produce four to six movies a year now because of that. You know? Nice, nice. So, I mean, it, finding the right people, I think, is key but um, also knowing who the right people are. Talent doesn't necessarily mean they're the right people. You know? Yes. Yeah, that's facts. That's facts. Okay, so we're here at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. Uh, I'm asking people, like, what's their favorite podcast on the Black Effect Network? Man, that, 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 that's, that, that's hard. You know, honestly, you know what's weird? I was always, like, I mean, I like gaming con uh, podcasts a little bit. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. And um, I was always, like, even with kids, how can they sit and just watch gaming and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, I see that. I kind of get it now, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's, our, it's our high school football game going to on the weekend, kind of. Right, right. Watch. It, it's their game in, in a sense. So, um, not I can't put my name on one, but I'm really... What about, like, they got Breakfast Club, they got Drink Champs, they got Million Dollars Worth of Game, they got uh, Reasonable Shady, they got Brilliant Idiots. Well, I mean, I didn't know you was like, to me, that's mainstream podcast. I didn't know you was going there, but that, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. to me, Breakfast Club, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like Drink Champs, but um, honestly, I like uh, Drink Champs. They, they, they do their thing and they get it out. I like the short and cut and sweet with the Breakfast Club. I kind of like that, you know what I mean? That's my favorite one, too. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so um, so are you a big podcast listener? Like, Do you spend a lot? Are you more or less to music? Like, what do you listen to? Honestly, I like to listen to audio books, and I like podcasts that 
like if I listen watch a podcast a few minutes for like gaming just to kind of relax, but I like podcasts that's almost remind me of a book in a sense. You know? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So um, I, I like that you said audio books. I'm in audio books. Give them a good audio book that they should check out. Uh, oh my God, um, seven perspective, seven perspectives of leadership. Um, that that's a real good yeah that's a real good book and also Phil Jackson has a good one called Eleven Rings that really knocked me off my feet yeah yeah that's a good one too um, uh, no it's a good one um, and this is real short and I'm not even sure they have it in an audio book form but okay okay book the Black Mamba book it's only maybe 30 40 pages but it's pure meat it's called what Black Mamba Kobe Bryant. Oh, okay. I'm a big Kobe fan. I didn't even know he... That, that's probably one of my favorite books. It's not a long book, though. Maybe I'd give it 70 pages, but it's pure meat from just a winner perspective. Nice, nice. Okay, before we get out of here, tell them um, where they can uh, check out your movies. And real quick, what's your most popular movie out of those 18? I would have to say Entanglement. Entanglement? I've heard of that. You seen Entanglement? Oh, okay. <laughs> that seemed like one... Um, I keep hearing about. Uh, so where did we yeah, all of them? Where can they go see most of them? If you go to ilovemyvideo.com and you can go and click all of them, it'll take you straight to them for free. So okay, ilovemyvideo.com, you'll see all the posters and movies. So they don't got to type your name in it or nothing. They just type in their website and that's all your work. And all, all my work will show up. And you can just pick what movie you want to watch right there. Okay. And last thing, um, this dust is getting in my eyes. It's dust <laughs> blowing in my fucking eyes and shit. Um. Last thing, uh, what would you say to somebody who's trying to break in the film industry? You feel me? Tell them what they need to have and how they should go about it if they want to get to your level. Don't don't worry about equipment. Don't worry about none of that stuff. That's always going to be there. Next week, they're going to be new, new pieces of equipment. Accountability. Accountability is every single thing. If you focus on consistency and building relationships, you can actually make mistakes then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. And, and people are putting them in, themselves in situations where they can't make mistakes and you're going to make them. You know, so people put all their money in equipment and stuff instead of building a relationship with somebody. Yeah, build those relationships. Yeah, so they can help you and work through it. You know what I mean? When you make those mistakes. But when you just have all your focus on equipment and we don't have a relationship, then stuff is going wrong. Like, it, it kills it, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, so you really need to focus on building relationships, learning how to love on people, learning how to step out of your shell and enjoy what other people are enjoying. And I know it doesn't go, doesn't sound directly with filmmaking, yeah. but that mindset is, let me, this last thing I'm going to say is, the most wealthiest person I know as a filmmaker personally never made one movie. Never touched mm. Never it's game right there. And I like how you said love on people. You feel me? It brings some authenticity to the situation. Yeah. That's what I like when I'm working with somebody and it's authentic. You feel me? Like we all trying to succeed. It ain't no ego. It's like yeah. we trying to make a good movie, not I'm trying to make a good movie. We a team. And that's where I feel like the magic happens in film. So last thing before we get out of here, uh, let them know exactly like how to reach you. If they want to have a, a, like a conversation with you, they like what you said here. How can they get in touch with you? I love my video.com. Everything is there. Or you can just check me out, Nakia, N A K I A T Hamilton, on any social media. <laughs> you already here first with the Black Effect Podcast Festival. We out. What up, world? It's your boy Maestro. I'm at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. I'm here with a young rapper. I'm going to let him tell y'all who he is. What's your name? My name is Wan, and I'm a female. Oh, okay. <laughs> and wh my father, where you, where you from? I'm from South Carolina. I'm from Anderson, but I live in Columbia right now. Nice, nice. So how long you been rapping? Uh, I've been rapping probably about five years. Five years? So I got to ask you this, because I used to rap too. I'm more into this media stuff now, but who inspired you to hop on the mic? You got somebody you looked up to that made you want to start start rapping? Yeah, personally, it would be my mom, definitely, because she's a poet, so she's been writing poetry my whole life. Um, but I guess like, uh, you know, like a... Uh, Famous, like Missy Elliott, most definitely. Creative gang, creative gang. I like that answer. I wasn't expecting that. Missy Elliott, I like that. Okay, okay. So when you say um, you make music, what would you say separates your music from 90 million niggas? <laughs> That's really what it feel like to me. Oh, I really feel like I make music for the masses. Like, I make music for young people, old people. Like, you'll never know who you'll see listening to my song. Like, um... People will come up to me and they be like, oh, yeah, I heard this and that song. And I'll be like, I didn't even think that you would listen to it. So I feel, really? like, yeah, I feel like that's what made me different. Like, um, you could put me anywhere and I'm going to float. 
Do you make music that like more make people think or make people dance? Both of them. I make feel good music. Like I'm, I made rap music, of course, but like sometimes my music, I'm just make music for you to ride to, for you to take road trips on, like stuff like that. Okay, out of all the songs that you put out, what's your personal favorite song? What's one song you like performing? It's like you like if you want to listen to any song from me, this the one you got to listen to. Um, it's called Russian Roulette. Okay. Yeah, it's called Russian Roulette. It's right now on all platforms. You type W V N uh, Russian Roulette. It's gonna be there. And um, you know who produced it? Who was the producer on that one? Yeah, um, my producer for Russian Roulette was. I was just gonna try to give him a quick shout out. I don't even remember who did that. We don't. I don't even remember who did the song, honestly. But if you look on the video, it's gonna be there. So just tap in with me on YouTube. And what kind of song is that? Is that a club song or? That's a club song. Yeah. That's club joint. Okay. Okay. So you here at the Black Effect Podcast Festival. Um. So I'm, I've been asking everybody, what's your favorite uh podcast to listen to on their network that they got? You know, Drink Chance, Million Dollars, like Breakfast Club. Which one of them you listen to? I listen to Breakfast Club every day. I me too. That's, all you that's my shit. About, that's how I even found out about the Black Effect Podcast Festival. But Breakfast Club, definitely number one. Um, I listen to Million Dollars Worth of Game. That's my shit. Um, I listen to all of them. I work from home, so, you know, I put that in my ear. Nice, I'm nice. Okay, so how long you been listening to podcasts and why? How long you been listening to them and why? Um, I say I've been listening to podcasts about two years. And just because I listen to music a lot, but I wanted to start feeding myself more. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. I, I, I just want to listen to things that's going to help me out. Like, I started fixing my credit off listening to podcasts. Shit like that. Real life shit. Life shit. I'm like, I need to do more of that. So that's what really got me into them. I'm on the same way. Like, I be picking up game, like, how to get a house, like, yeah. little loan shit. Like, it be real games that I never would have heard because, like, people don't really be telling you a lot of stuff right. you need to know. You know what I'm saying? If you listen to it sometimes, so yeah, and I think I love the fact that I can listen to podcasts and share, get information, and people give me game, and I'm just leveling up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just leveling up through this whole thing. Let me see what else I can ask you. So, um, okay, back to the music. You got a project out already, or are you about to promote a new project? Yeah, I got Melodramatics right out right now on all platforms. Um, I got a single dropping with Top Shelf Entertainment on uh, April the 28th. It's called Just Me. Make sure y'all go lock in to that. Um, I definitely got another project dropping this year. I'm um, working on it. I ain't got no release date, but it's probably going to come about third quarter, so stay tuned for that. Okay, and, and as an artist, what would you say, describe your character, I say in like three words, so, kind of, so people can kind of get a feel of you, because it's like a lot of people out here. What what who are you in three words? I'm very shy, which is why I've been standing over here and I didn't even say nothing for the longest because I'm just so I'm like I'm very introverted. But I know you ain't like that when you're on the stage. No, not on stage, not on stage, but just personally, I'm very introverted. I'm humble and um uh, I'm wise. Like for my age, I soak up wisdoms. How old are you again? I'm 28. Okay. Yeah, I'm 28. So I soak up stuff and I spit it back out, like in a way that other people can understand it. So I feel like that's me. Okay, so what was been like one of your challenges as a rapper? You feel me? Was it was it the look? Was it the producers? Was it the best place to perform? What's been a challenge? Uh, being a female, like damn. yeah, being a female has been the hardest thing. But I don't give a damn about none of that. Like I've been in the military, so I've been with dudes a lot. So right. you know, just being a female, making it an even playing field, getting the recognition I deserve. But I feel like now I'm in South Carolina, so y'all gonna see me pretty soon in this area too. But I feel like I'm definitely gaining some traction there. So I. Feel feel like now I got my ball in the court, so yeah. It's a, female rap is blowing up right now. Like they really just doing better than the dudes. So I feel like you probably will be next. Like it's, it's that's how it's looking out here. But yeah, that's what it is. Tell them one more time where they can find you, check out your music and everything, Instagram, TikToks and shit like that. Yeah, y'all can follow me on Instagram at wan w a n dot pdf. If you log on to Intotem Enterprises dot com, you'll find all my merchandise. Stay in tune with me. Um, yeah, let's go. That's it, live from the Black Effect Podcast Festival. We out. Yeah.
process. Um, but we don't have the benefit of, you know, a lot of those things that get people to click and subscribe and engage. So we have to cast the furthest net possible. So by being on Black and Fame Podcast Networks, it allows us to tap into other, you know, podcasts that may be focused in other areas that can still kind of uplift what we're doing. And, and most of the times when you see a lot of these high profile cases, they may talk about it for 24, 48 hours at best. My, I have the job of talking about it 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, constantly getting information out to our people. And so the Black Effect Podcast Network has allowed me an opportunity to do it unfiltered and as long as I want to. When I'm on TV, I maybe get five to seven minutes at best, but the podcast allows me to really get in, get deep, and really engage us to what I say, push the line, so that you can do politics until something happens. Ebony, what is the best part about podcasting, and how do you find joy in creating your content? So I really love podcasting for obvious reasons, but um, there's a lot of things that's bringing me joy, so I make it quick. So the first thing is the conversations. When I created The Professional Home Girl, it was created to be a love letter to black women. So when I received emails and DMs and messages from women that look like me, letting me know that they not feel only seen or heard, it makes me very proud. Um, the second thing that is bringing me joy is, as we know, following our dreams is not easy. So the fact that I bet on myself, that I'm seeing the fruits of my labor, is making me really happy. And last but not least, to be a part of a network where most of the people that are making things happen are black women, makes me really happy. So. What up, Roger Boy? My show here at the Black Effect Podcast Festival, and I got a musician with me. He's gonna tell you what he got going on. What's your name, bro, and where you from? Big Chief, Chief Feezy, C H I E F E E Z Y. And where you from? I'm from Denver. I am Denver, Mount High City, aka Mr. 420. Nice, nice. So you were telling me earlier that you do music. So what inspired you to hop into the music game? Like, why are you going that route? I'm just one of them five elements of hip hop. So, you know, from the b boy to the popping to the break dancing to the MCing. And I'm not a rapper. Let's get that straight off the rip. You know what I mean? I'm an MC. MC. Okay. What's the difference for, for those that don't know? Yeah, yeah the difference, I'm going to just make it simple and plain. You know, a rapper will say anything versus an MC having something to really say. There you go. Real talk. Real talk. I am hip hop. I am hip hop from Denver. I was coming right behind Crooked Eye right before Def. Crooked Eye is nice. So I got I got bars, homie. So this ain't no Mickey Mouse uh, MC right here, you know. And I, I right. I'm legendary in the streets. You understand? So I'm a street legend of all time. So when when they listen to your project, what can they expect that they ain't gonna hear nowhere else? Like what can they expect going into one of your projects? They just gonna hear that that authenticity that we've been uh, you know being a, a a deaf ear to for so long. You know, Denver's kind of like a baby LA, but without the water and the palm trees, we got the the mountains and the snow. You understand? So, you know, uh, the mentality's pretty much the same with all the streets, uh, the gangs, and all that. But um, you know, we always had our own little individuality and talent from Denver, man. So that's what I represent. My latest single, So Mal High With It, it's over 120,000 plus streams. I got a plaque coming from Spotify for that, just to solidify the authenticity. And it's a radio banger, club banger. So real quick before we get out of here, what you, uh, where can people find you? Where can they ch check out if they want to DM you? IG, find me on IG at Mal High City Poster Boy. And I'm, my music is popping on Spotify right now. So, uh, so Mal High with it and just on uh, IG at Mal High City Poster Boy. And I can tell you done been through a lot. Give them some words of wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Just the up and coming people that look up to you and be like, I want to do what he's doing. Give them some words of wisdom real quick. Hey, just, just a little bit of game. You know, just just don't be a follower. Be a trendsetter. And, uh, you know, do it do it for the, for the passion and the love and not for, you know, for popularity. You know, just be real. And, you know, all this fake and... Follow each trend set on. I ain't with all. I ain't with none of that, man. You know, it's too much of that going on in the world. So, just be real with yourself, or you can't be real with the world. You know what I mean? Live from the Black Effect Podcast Festival. You already know what it is. We out. Sure. Jess, I want to ask you the same question. What's the best part about podcasting, and how do you find joy in it? The best part about podcasting for me is all right. So I was one of the the, the first influences to be canceled. And, um, and y'all can clap it up for that. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with a little cancellation. You know what I'm saying? Let the church say amen. You know? 
you know. No, nah, but um, and uh, yeah, br bring it down, church. Bring it down, church. But, but what I love about it is I can get, I, cause I say what everybody is thinking, and nobody can cancel me on my podcast. Nobody can cancel me no way in life ever. Let's just start there. But you, you, you know how people get like they get banned from shows and networks and they get kicked off from projects that they're doing because they have their own opinions, they have their own beliefs and things that you know. And you can't, you can't, you can't cancel your podcast. You know what I mean? You kicked off radio, you can't get kicked off of a podcast. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's a space where I'm the voice of the people, like literally, like even through just with the mess. No matter what I do, I say what everybody thinking. I say what everybody thinking, you know, and they they won't they, they can never cancel me. So I love the black effect. I love being a part of the network that supports my voice. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a lot to say, and it's not all bad. You know what I mean? So yeah, but ain't nothing wrong with a little bad. You know, ain't nothing wrong with a little bad. I'm such a bad influence sometimes. It's okay. whether it's the kind of content you create or how people consume their podcasts. Well, I think podcasting is just unique overall because I'm able to include so many different elements that I enjoy. So I love art, I love storytelling, I love entrepreneurship, business, kiki, meeting new people. So I think that podcast is a great tool to get things started when it comes to your business or anything. I want to throw that question to you as well. As a creator, what do you think is unique about podcasting? But be it the way you create your content or how people consume it. Well, for me that answer is different because I don't consider myself a creator. I consider myself called to do this work. So in the space that I do, it is truly about being called to speak action to power, to speak truth to power. And a lot of times on topics I may not want to cover or things I may not want to say I'm obligated to speak for you so it's kind of like you know when Moses was told to go to the wilderness and and to free the slaves regardless of what he wanted to do the Bible says that he can I get can I go there I know it's Saturday but it, it's very important because Aaron it said Aaron will send a communicator so even though you may have the power to get things done the communicator is the most important thing in my in my world who is going to be able to translate for the people? Who's going to be able to translate to say this is how they really feel it? Who is going to be able to go up against powerful people, whether it's the government, presidents, secret service, you name it, I hit them all across the board. So for me, it's not necessarily, I'm not sitting back trying to figure out what content I can, can create. I'm sitting back listening to wisdom on how can I be called to serve my people and how can I move in, in wisdom and make sure that my steps are ordered. So when you do that, in, in my space, for those that want to get in the social justice space, let me be clear, this is not about you creating content. This is not about clicks. It's not about subscribe, subscribe now. It's not about clicking the like. It is about making sure that when it's all said and done, you can be held account for what you have done for the least of these.